Hi guys, welcome back to my video. Today I am going to be doing uh, an airbrush and mixed powder product look like I normally do because I'm all about mixing products to get the look you want within the budget you want and inspiring you to glam inside and out. I'm also going to be doing um, airbrush. I'll be using my to-go compressor and um, I wanted to talk about today, I'm just covering up with my NW25 concealer. Um, and I got eyelash extensions, so I wanted to try those out. So a little bit about that as we go. And I had a really bad breakout, took the last couple weeks off, just life stress, uh, all kinds of things happening from transmission kicking to all the fire alarms in my house going off for no reason and figuring all that out and being incredibly tired and stressed. So. Um, my face is cleared up a little bit, but I still have the dark spots and the uh, discoloration. So I always like to talk about that in all the videos because so many women have problem skin and it's just part of life and you just kind of have to roll with it and figure out what works. I use my NW25 concealer to camouflage the darker color. It gives me heavier coverage than the airbrush, but with the airbrush I can build it. It's just less work and I'm using less product and that way it's just faster. Um, so if you if you have discoloration or acne or anything or you're trying to cover, those are just like some quick tips and I talk about them in all my videos. So if you're liking my videos and you like how I mix products and um, I also do different hairstyles and you know, whatever inspires me, um, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Click the bell for notifications on my latest videos because it really helps me out and it inspires me to keep going. And I know we're all looking to be inspired right now. There's so much going on and people are gaining weight and they're being demotivated and they're at home and they're not used to that. And for someone like me who had been self-employed for so long and then working from home was actually a blessing in disguise. So um, there's all kinds of strange things going on right now. Anyway, back to the makeup. I Once again, I'm still using my airbrush foundations. I use two, two colors to contour. I use a dark and a light. And this is considered a soft contour. Um, you can go deeper and darker with your airbrush foundations. Um, so I'm using the Balicio, uh Cappuccino and Vanilla. Vanilla as my highlight and Cappuccino as my base foundation. But today I wanted to mention another really great airbrush company is Tickled Pink Airbrush and the owner is a trained esthetician and because of that she has a real passion for skincare and her skincare products work seamlessly with the airbrush makeup and I found with all airbrush makeup, not just her brand. So that's kind of a bonus if you're getting into airbrush and you want skincare that works and you're using it on clients or even on yourself. So she takes real care in her um, creation of her skincare products. I have a video where I reviewed them and she had some really gorgeous toners, uh, face masks, etc. But one item, I don't know if I had mentioned, and it's so valuable this time of year, like so helpful, because not only is um, good skin the foundation of gorgeous makeup, because it really just makes everything easier and you don't have to put as much, but um, exfoliation and so what this is is a little lip pumice and I don't know anyone who doesn't get dry lips uh, during the fall and winter months and you can use it like a lipstick which I love and it's just like a little rocky stony existence <laughs> put it on your lips you know and just work that in however way you want you may have a better way I like to do it that way but it feels really nice in your lips and you can just easily get right into your lip area where you get all that dead skin and exfoliate it off. And it's a nice little quick thing to do. So I wanted to mention that. I love this product. It's called Lip Pumice and it's available on the Tickle Pink uh, Airbrush Makeup site. And uh, so is all of their skincare products. They just came out with a gorgeous eye cream. I have not purchased that and tried it yet, but in the near future I'm hoping to. As like everyone else, you're kind of conserving and picking and choosing what you're shopping online about because lately that's where you can get the majority of your stuff. So um, if you're like me, you're kind of looking and budgeting. But I have an eye cream right now I'm using, so before I purchase another, I'll use that up. But this you can use anytime, and it's a cute little uh, container like a lipstick. I love it. So I wanted to mention that. 
Um, and it's got a nice kind of almost minty, I don't know if it's a taste or feel. Anyway, probably should take some water, wash that off. I used my towel. Don't mind me. Always a crazy mess. Um, so once again, we're going to go in and I'm going to do the airbrush foundation and yes, the eyelash extension. So I wanted to touch about that while I'm working. Um, I went in and decided to try them. I've always wanted to try eyelash extensions and I just thought it'd be something fun to try. Um, and I have a tech in my area in Lakewood, Washington that is I found was really good. She had five star reviews. And uh, her name is Melissa and it is, she's the same person who had done the brow lamination and tint that I had talked about in another video. And I decided to go in because I liked her so much and try the eyelash extensions. So that was another reason why I didn't do a video in the last couple weeks because I had it done, it was super light and it didn't really pop on camera. But my tech actually uh, said she wanted to add more in. She wanted to build it with me. So whatever, we did that. I ended up going in a couple days later and she just chose to add these in at no charge. She just felt like that was the look I needed for me. And she tailors the look to you, which I loved. And she really took care to figure out what I like and what will work for me after talking to me. So that was kind of nice because, because I do these videos for fun, I like to have an eye that pops. And I was a big fan of changing around my eyelashes with the strip. And I found that, you know, obviously you can't do that with eyelash extensions. Once they're on, you know, they're on and you don't want to be putting strips on top of that. And they use a special adhesive. It was painless. It was easy. It was about 90 minutes to put the initial application on. And they turned out really beautiful. So I just love what she did with these. And I'm pretty much ready to go in the morning other than my troubled skin, which I like to give a coverage to. So I just add in a little concealer. Eyebrows are pretty much done, maybe a little pencil. And then my eyelashes are done and I'm good to go on my dog walks or if I wanna run, down, run around low key. Today, I'm gonna do airbrush makeup and powdered products with the eyelash extensions. And for some people, they may be worried or not knowing uh, what to do or if they can use uh, airbrush with their eyelash extensions. So this might be interesting or it might be boring. I don't know. But if you like it, click the like button, share the video, and subscribe by clicking the bell for all the latest notifications. I cannot say that enough because people don't do it, and it helps. It really helps. Okay. So I'm going in with my cappuccino, and I'm just doing a light uh, foundation. And really when you use the concealers, which I always, I've, I've really started to use all the time with my airbrush just because I find it's just, I use less product and I'm not trying to cover. I'm just, the, the concealers are heavier. The NW25 from MAC is a studio uh, fixed concealer, I believe, and it's heavier. And it just speeds up the process when I want to cover a little mark or a blemish or what have you. And, um, yeah, so just getting my fluid out. I'm always cleaning in between. Um, some people have more than one gun. I have one gun that's working right now. <laughs> so I'm, uh, and I don't really do two guns. I pretty much do my foundation and then, um, I'll, depending on what I'm doing, I may do airbrush eyes, cheeks. Um, you can do a full face, but sometimes I don't want to. <laughs> I like mixing products, um, and I like creating different looks, and I feel it's about just using the tool that works versus trying to be this authentic airbrush person, which I think is unrealistic, because these guns do jam up, and you have to keep them clean. As, and as well, when you're working on clients, it's easy <coughs> to do an ad with someone with flawless skin who's a model who's 20. But the reality is women have problem skin. And that's what you're not seeing. You're not seeing the challenges of rosacea, discoloration, major acne, and how to cover it and cover it properly. And as a makeup artist, you take those extra steps. And even, you don't have to be a makeup artist to do this. You can use airbrush to get a gorgeous finish. All you have to do is learn your little steps that works for you and do it for you. And that's what I try to teach people with the airbrush makeup. You can do this yourself. 
It's just getting over the hurdle of what equipment and what products work. And these videos are here to help you do that, whether you're a professional or just an everyday girl who just wants to have a nice flawless finish. So I wanted to emphasize that because I've actually had a couple people contact me in the last week asking me about airbrush. And so um, I love it for many reasons, um, not just for the photography, but also for my own personal skin issues, which is something that just happens. It's life. We don't all have flawless skin. Um, and so you kind of have to roll with it. So, and if you're doing makeup on other people, I mean, if you're a makeup artist, you'll know that you get a lot of women who don't take care of their skin. It's just a reality. It's the products are expensive and the everyday woman may not use toners and skincare and facials and all this gorgeous stuff because it's $150 for a facial and not everybody can afford that, especially in a time like right now. But if you are one of those women and you can indulge in those things, that's terrific because you can upkeep your skin. So hopefully these videos give you some tips, whether you have a budget or not, where it gives you ideas and tips where you can take care of your skin and you can still look great and feel great inside and out. So, that's my piece for today. Anyway, let's get back to the makeup. I'll be right back. Okay, hi guys. So I'm back, um, and one thing I love to keep on hand while I'm doing the makeup is these kind of pointed Q-tips. And the reason why is I feel, and this is just my own little tip, I pull back the lever and I clean in between because I feel it gets clogged and a lot of times your gun will work quite easily. It just gets a buildup in there. And I, I didn't find that I had a ton of people explaining that or teaching me these things when I went in for like the Dynair two day course or any of this stuff. And so um, it's just something I think is important to mention if you're getting into airbrush or you have a kid at home and you're, you're wondering why it's constantly getting clogged, pull back the lever so you don't damage the needle. Take a, a somewhat pointed tip because it'll fit perfectly. And I just go like that and it cleans it out. And I do that casually in between colors and while I'm doing it and it just prevents a lot of headache and having to clean. Okay, so I've gone in and I've used the cappuccino throughout the face as my base color. And um, I, I, I really like this foundation. It's been working really well. I love the Dynair foundation as well, the soft glow. I like a soft matte because it helps cover when you're trying to cover like acne or discoloration or any of these things. The softer matte won't make you look dried out, but it gives you a heavier coverage without looking cakey, which can be tricky with regular makeup. So a lot of times people don't know that I'm rarely wearing makeup unless, you know, I go really light my foundation. And what I like to do for my highlight and contour, go light around my mouth because this is where I have my the dark areas. I go light through the nose. I love to go underneath the eye and brighten. It's like a TV trick for camera. And this is significantly lighter, this um, foundation. And that's what you're doing with contour. You're using light and dark foundations to create light and darks and shadowing on your face where you want it. So you're controlling the light. So I like to go in and go through the center, even though I have bangs. I just feel it finishes it. And wherever like the sun would touch or light and shadow, I would go through. So I always lighten around the mouth for my skin tone, underneath the eye, and I'll do more of a, a triangle. And I kind of rock back and forth. You're gonna see a lot of people in these airbrush videos or seminars doing tiny little circles. I would go insane spending my life doing tiny little circles. I am a um, you know heavy pedal, <laughs> heavy foot to the metal or to the pedal. That's how I drive, that's how I do everything. I don't have time to la 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 la. So when I spray, if you watch me do my foundation, which was something a friend brought up to me, she was watching my technique, and I don't even realize I'm doing it. I go wider, but I'm keeping my distance, so I'm getting a nice finish. And you should be able to do that if your gun is set up properly and it's clean. If you're getting spurting, or if, you get, if it's getting stuck, it's because you need to clean the nozzle, either with this, or unscrewing the top, and then pinching the needle. Just with your fingers, you can do it. And those are usually quick fixes to keep going if your gun gets jammed. But in terms of technique, I will go wider, and I'll come in and around, and then I'll go in closer to whatever problemed area I have, so if you watch me spray. And I don't usually talk about it because I don't take notice of it, but because I just recently had a conversation with a good friend who is a esthetician and makeup artist and wants to get into airbrush, I really thought it was valuable to share that with you. So now that I'm doing the contour and I'm going lighter, I'm still keeping my distance, but I go in and I vary it wherever I have a, need a little bit more coverage. 
And if you're doing this on someone else, you can see easily where they may need it, and some may not need it. Um, if you get someone quite young, you know, 15 to 20, some of the times they have flawless skin, sometimes they have very problematic skin. And that's where you'd go in a little bit closer with your, what, what, either it be your base or your highlight, depending on what you're doing. Now I'm doing my lids. And like I said, I put uh, uh, eyelash extensions. So I'm actually being careful about how close I go in. But I'm doing it so I get a nice base. Now my tech said that it shouldn't be a problem. As long as your products don't have oil, you can use airbrush foundations or any makeup. The only product that would be an issue, if you love your eyeliner and you're using those coal pencils, they have um, an ingredient in it that can weaken the retention of your lashes. And what that means is, when you're weakening the retention, it's how long your lashes will stay on, so your retention will be lower. But she has a client, that being said, that uses coal pencil religiously on the inside and outside of her eye, and her retention is good. But I have a tech that's very good and doesn't apply a lot of glue. And it's when they apply a lot of glue that it can damage your own real lash. Because I asked her about that, because being uh, having worked as a makeup artist, I'd had girls coming in saying that it wrecked their lash, and that they used Latisse, and then their eyelashes grew so long they had to trim them. Crazy stuff that I don't want to be doing. Well, she explained to me that it's the amount of glue you use and the skill level of your tack. So if you are someone looking to have someone do it, um, read the reviews. And if you're someone, if you're a professional who, who wants to do it, um, then, <laughs> then I put it out there. I don't know what to say. Anyway, um, so my tech seems to be really good and the lashes are lasting and they look beautiful. And you can now see how I have gotten a lot lighter underneath here. And once I put powder in and, and bring out the eyes and all that stuff, it, it builds and it all blends in. So that's my contour, that's how I do it. I use two colors. I don't have to do a lot of dramatic contour where I'm taking the dark and thinning out my nose because I naturally have a small nose. But if you had a larger nose, you'd go darker and you can do it all with airbrush. And I would recommend it. Um, you don't have to though. You could take that darker concealer line here while you're doing your lighter concealer on dark spots or whatever, blend that in, then put your foundation on your airbrush. And uh, I know it's a trend right now to do blush and then put your foundation. And in my last video, I did that, but I just did it because I, I had forgotten to put my foundation on. So you can do that as well. There's no rules. It's whatever final look you want to do, whatever personal stamp you want to do on the makeup, but it has to look good, either on yourself or if you're doing it on another person. So technique and playing and finding your own little um, unique stamp is really important, even in your own makeup. Have fun with it and play. So... I'm going to go in with my eyebrow pencil, and I'm not airbrushing my eyebrow pencils. I am using the L'Oreal Soft Black. I like a... They're a little bit done from earlier today. But I did, um, as I had mentioned, the brow lamination, so they totally brush up, which is kind of nice. I like that. And I find it easier. And then I just go in and I just fill in little gaps where I see it. And I, as a tip, always stand back and do eyebrows. I never go up close and do eyebrows because I think you'll drive yourself insane if you're doing this on yourself for fun or if you're just a newbie. And I have tricky eyebrows and I have I, um, airbrushed them in the past, but nowadays I'm just doing the pencil. I find it a little bit more accurate. And with the brow lamination, I find I'm just filling in little areas because I also had a tint. And it's usually my bottom more that I'm filling in. I also don't want to be spending hours doing a brow because I do wear makeup every day and I enjoy it. And I feel it's a real motivator. If your hair and makeup is done, I feel like you are ready for the day. And it just makes you feel a little fresh. So I'm going in with my NYX Fair. So this, once again, is a concealer that's very light for me, but at the same time works as a highlight. I have a mixed skin tone. So it's the concept or the idea behind it that will work for anyone. So you wanna pick a foundation that's lighter than your natural skin tone or your foundation to do your highlight, whether it be your contour or around your brows. That's all contouring and highlighting is. 
And then I might go in, because this is a different shade than my original. My first concealer is closer to my skin tone, but warm. Even though I have a cool tone, I talk about how I play with cools and lights. So because I'm covering acne and, and blemishes, I could use an orange or blue or something like that. I have a mixed skin tone, but I just use a concealer because I find it easier and it saves on time, but I use a warmer tone to play off of what I'm trying to do with camouflaging. So if that's confusing, just leave questions below. But it's just these little tricks on perfecting it for your own makeup that allows you to great, get a great, just kind of flawless natural look. So um, I might go around my nose because I have a little bit of rosacea. And then on my chin, I've had a lot of breakouts for some weird reason. And it's very black. And so as you can see, I'm looking pretty even. This is my base. So I've done my contour highlights. I've gone around my brows and it's very simple actually. If I wasn't talking, this would be going a lot quicker. <laughs> so anyway, um, so that's my base. So now I can go in and do eyes, foundation, whatever. With the eyelash extensions, you can totally wear a liquid liner. There's no problem with that. So I was super happy about that. I like for, I'm just doing a simple day look. I just really want to talk about technique and the eyelash extensions and stuff like that for this video, so I hope you're enjoying it. Oh, these bangs, my bangs got really long. Anyway, um, I'm using my Cat Norel, Noir, sorry. And then I'm just doing, just along the, the lash line. And then with the eyelash extensions, you do have to um, brush them and wash them. So, and my tech gave me a small bottle of foam wash and I just go like that. And then in the shower, you want the water to hit them, she told me. And so, and then when I get out, I just towel dry like this and then I brush them. And I may go through the day and just look at them and brush them just because I'm fascinated by them right now. But I find them super easy and I'm almost ready just with these eyelashes on. So I'm loving that, the convenience. So I'm just tapping on the inner corners. I'm not drawing. And then I'm pulling it down and across for the liner. And I'm doing a very small, cute cat eye. I'm not going big or hard. I always check my sides. And I might just take the end of the Q-tip and clean it up. So this is just like, for me, this is an everyday look. For someone else, this might be dressed up. Oh, another product I want to mention is if you are um, interested in good concealers and mixing it with your airbrush, I use the MAC Pepin Primes as well. And there's also a Chanel one, a clay, a clay pen, sorry, I can't talk. But um, they have pigments in them that highlight and brighten. So when you use these, and I, I could easily put this over top my airbrush and it's not a problem, I can blend it in and I can use it underneath. And ideally, I like to do all the concealers underneath and then do the airbrush on top. That's just my preference, but you don't have to. So I find these really great. I have them in two colors, a light and kind of a medium tone. One is cool, one is warm, because you know I like to play with cool and warm tones to disguise discoloration, acne, and scarring, and all that. And I find these are, concealers are great too to hide fine lines if you're worried about aging, whatever, or just stress or dehydration. These Prep and Prime pens from MAC, and there's one from Chanel, um, they have pigments in it that brighten. So when you put them around your dark areas, once you've kind of camouflaged, they just brighten it and highlight. So it's hard to explain, but it, it actually brightens. So I recommend these. I love those. And I don't always remember to use them because as you see, I'm using two concealers or sometimes one and I'm not really too worried about it on my day to day. If I was doing a special makeup, like for camera, these brightening pens are amazing. Um, I feel blended in with the foundation, but you can't always do a camera looking makeup. I think it's sometimes you just gotta have natural makeup, especially if you're at home, working home remote. During these times, people are just kind of like trying to stay motivated. So, but like I said, if it makes your day special, put it on. Like, I just wanted to tell you about that product. I thought it was great. I purchase all my makeup products. Um, in case you're wondering, and I don't promote any one company. Um, some companies have great products, some don't, and some have great customer service, some don't, <laughs> so, and I'll tell you. Anyway, 
moving on. So now we got eyeliner. Um, I'm gonna go in with this really, you're gonna laugh at me. I think this color is disconnected, or disconnected, discontinued. And it was by MAC, and it was called Orchid. Orchard? Or okra, okra, that's what it's called. Me and my dirty brush. Um, and it's kind of this yellowy brown. And so I loved this color. And I would put it in my crease like this, and this would be my to-go look. I'm a little dewy. And it's, on me, it looks kind of like a yellowy brown, but kind of more of a brown. Hopefully it's not the dirty brush. Um, <laughs> there you go. And it looks natural, just adds a little definition and depth. And you can, um, I've got another one like, that I'll blend out. So you can do this all with airbrush, but like I said, sometimes it's not feasible or it's not in the budget or it's just not physically working. And so you have to be prepared and be flexible in the mind when you're working on someone or yourself to just use whatever tools at your disposal and make it work because it is the final look that's really uh, what's important. So I've gone in and just added in a little depth just in the crease keeping it very soft and natural today. And I'm gonna go in with my Prep and Prime powder. And you know this is one of my favorites if you watch my videos. I like to put it around the eye to almost uh, softly mat it and, and set it, the makeup. And I find I can go all day. I don't check my makeup throughout the day, uh, believe it or not. I just basically put it on once and go, and I find it's fine. And I'll go around the problemed areas, around the mouth and chin, and tap around the nose to just set the powder and kind of matte it a little bit. And I do love highlight, but I'm not a big fan of heavy highlight. And I'm finding more and more, I'm just taking like really simple highlight powders. This is a beautiful orange pink from Wet n Wild. And I'm just tapping and I'm just going right here. So I'm going diagonal to the eye and I'm just kind of creating a light right in there and pulling it out a little bit. Like, I, you know, I'm never just popping it on and leaving it. I'm blending, blending, blending. As you know, if you're a makeup person, you know to do that. If you're new to makeup, get used to it. All right, so this is a very subtle look, very soft and fresh, and it's got pinks and just a little warmth to it. And now for the last little step is the blush. My favorite, um, there's so many good favorite blushes. I, I generally like a soft pink for my blush, whether it be airbrush makeup or powder products. And I'm not, I, I, I'm very drawn to soft pinks or oranges. And so you'll see me using these MAC powders quite a bit for my day to day. So today I'm going to do a soft pink and I went high close to the highlight and I blended in with it. Okay, and I'm tapping and I'm circling and pulling up. But I'm not putting strong color in here, at least not today. And I'm blending in with my highlight so it flows together. And this is very much a soft day look for me. Okay, so if for airbrush I would do the same thing. So it's all the same techniques. It just depends what you have at your, at your disposal, if your equipment's working, and if you have the patience. Because if you pull out your gun and you're just frazzled and rushing, it can turn into a mess. So have the intuition or the know-how to have other tools on hand so you can mix up your look. Whether you're an artist, it happens, or whether you're just doing your own makeup. So I think today's video is all about just being prepped and prepared, I'm not sure. But I am loving these eyelash extensions. And I think I had signed up to do hybrid, but she really tailors it to each person. So I was prepared to, you know, I, I just let her have creative license and then I just said this is what I do and this is what I like. And, and then um, a couple days later, we went in and she just added where she wanted more, but I told her how I like to have more of a line and depth in the middle. And that's what I did. So I'm super happy with them. And she's talking about doing a little bit more next for the fill. So I'm excited about that. So I think they're great and they're fun if you can do it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this look today. I'm doing a soft brown by NYX on the lip. 
I'm going to go a little bit over top today. And the beauty about these mattes and the soft one is that you can draw a little bit over. So drawing a little bit over your lip allows it to look, give the illusion that it's a little bit bigger without having to do cosmetic surgery. If you're one of those people who's just scared of it or hasn't done it or solely wants to do it for makeup purposes. It's a fun little thing to do <laughs> when um, just for your own play. And you really can use your makeup to play and widen eyes and lips. You don't always have to do it in your phone. So I'm going to finish off the hair and I hope you enjoyed this look today and our chit chat and I hope you enjoyed the information on the eyelash extensions and the pumice stone. I'll put a link below for the tickled pink pumice stone. Um, I don't get any credit for it or any kickbacks. It's just, I just think it's a great product for this time of year just to exfoliate your lips because gorgeous makeup starts with gorgeous skincare. And I was reminded about that. Uh, I had a great conversation yesterday with a friend who's an esthetician and who also talks about the makeup and was watching other artists and just kind of like asking my opinion. I'm like, yeah, sometimes people don't take the time to do the steps. And even on our own, we don't do it, but we do what we need, and the reason you go to a professional is that you want them to do those extra steps. One, to learn, or maybe just to be wowed, because you don't normally have that time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video.